My two-year-old son and I uh, would get up in the mornings just to have breakfast. And one day I was feeding him some breakfast. And as I was sitting across from him in his high chair, all of a sudden he just froze. Kind of time stands still in those moments. And I realized that he was choking. Here's the thing. I didn't know what to do. So I didn't have a fundamental skill set um, of these sort of core skills that we all should know, but we don't. And so, you know, he started to violently cough and I got lucky. He was able to subsequently violently cough it up on his own. And, you know, after crying with him and just being grateful that he was still alive, I started to really think through why was this not on my radar as a father? And it turned out that I did some research and 72 percent of parents aren't even aware of the fact that uh, the number one cause of childhood deaths um, are from unintentional injuries uh, up to the age of five. That's sudden infant death syndrome, that's suffocations, strangulations, choking, drowning. And so um, I was part of that 72% who just mm -hmm. didn't know. And that's where my journey started. All right, welcome back to the Better Human Podcast. Today we've got a cool guest. Mark, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Of course, you and I were chatting uh, a few weeks ago and we were getting into some of the work that you do, which is very cool. And that's where we said, let's get you on the podcast and you got to come and share this message. You got to tell people about what you're doing because I think it's important work and I don't want to butcher it. So for the audience and just so I don't butcher it, Mark, why don't you give us a little bit of an overview uh, of the work that you're doing in your company? Sure. It actually took me by surprise. It wasn't something that I uh, planned on. Uh, so I was a, an investigator in New York City for over 26 years. Um, four kids, um, living in Connecticut, commuting to New York City, um, uh, really long commute. And so uh, my two-year-old son and I uh, would get up in the mornings just to have breakfast and uh, we'd wake up before anybody else. And, um, you know, just one day I was feeding him some breakfast, which consisted of, you know, chopped up pineapple, uh, strawberries, blueberries, and fresh fruit. Um, and as I was sitting across from him in his high chair, all of a sudden he just froze. Um, everything just stopped. And, um, you know, it, it takes a beat to really it, it kind of time stand still in those moments. And I realized that he was choking. Um, but, um, you know, here's the thing. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a fundamental skill set um, of these sort of core skills that we all should know. Uh, mm -hmm. But we don't um, as parents. And so, um, you know, he started to violently cough um, and I got lucky. He was able to. I subsequently violently cough it up on his own. Um, but that really got my attention because here I was with, like I said, four kids. I had an infant upstairs, my daughter. Um, and, you know, after crying with him and just being grateful that he was still alive, um, I started to really think through how I got here. Why was this not on my radar as a, as a father? And, mm -hmm. um, and it turned out that I did some research and 72% of parents aren't even aware of the fact that uh, the number one cause of childhood deaths um, are from unintentional injuries um, up to the age of five. That's sudden infant death syndrome, that's suffocations, strangulations, choking, drowning, uh, to name leading causes. And so um, I was part of that 72% who just mm -hmm. didn't know. And that's where my journey started. Scary. So scary as a, as, as a parent and as a father. And I'd imagine as you were describing it, which is like your, your two-year-old froze because they're trying to sort of cough up and, you know, gag out or, 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 or remove the blockage from what, what they're choking on. I would imagine there was a moment of freeze for you as well. I mean, you're like, it's like, what do I do? Right. And, and what do I grab and where do I go? And I mean, for all the parents out there, I think they could not only relate, but empathize, which is, you know, we've all had kids that have gotten hurt and we've had those moments, right? Uh, I, I was chatting with a friend and he was once telling me that like, uh, um, he was with his daughter, turned around for two seconds and then back around and she was gone and panicked, right? Now she was fine, right? Just sort of, uh, uh wandered off a little bit. But these are these are the moments that you don't want to find yourself in, right? These are you don't want to find yourself in of what should I do and how should I do it and stuff like that. And that stat is huge, man. Seventy three percent, right? Not knowing what to do and um, very, very, very scary. So this led you to your company. Now, tell us about the company. Sure. So uh, when I looked at the the statistics and really sort of since I was an investor, I used that skill set. To say, you know, what are what are some of the ways we can fix this? Mm -hmm. um, and a number of things came up. Um, number one, just how bad our memories are. So, for instance, if you get certified in CPR, which I did immediately, which mm -hmm. is something everybody should do, but most people don't. But if you can do it, um, but the reality is, is that within 24 hours of leaving that class that you just got certified in, 
um, you're, for, you're going to forget about 60% of what you just learned and within 48%. It's about 80% of what you just learned. So mm-hmm. when I learned about that, um, I thought, well, okay, so we need to not only encourage people to get certified, but also we should have an online class. So a class where they can regularly refresh those skills and have 24 seven access to it. Um, so I created that. So I created a baby and child safety masterclass, which covers everything from how to create a safe sleep environment for expecting parents um, to how to, you know, significantly reduce the risk of SIDS, a sudden infant death syndrome, to choking, drowning, you know, poisoning, and you name it. Even a missing child, like you said. You know, one of the interesting things about that is, and I have a video uh, on social on this, is, um, you know, when a, when a child actually goes missing in your home, most parents will go and start checking under um, beds and in closets. But, the, but what you really should do is check all water sources first. Because children can drown so much faster. The time to check under closets and, and that type of thing is after you check all water sources, including toilets, um, obviously a pool if you have it. Uh, but people don't think about buckets, toilets, even a dog, uh, you know, the dog water bottles uh, or dog water. You know, so it's really eliminating those sources. So, again, it's about creating that master class that people can access 24-7. And then one extra thing, as far as an innovation standpoint that we just launched about two weeks ago, um, we were recently certified by Amazon for emergency response skills, specifically for choking. Um, Because when this happened to my son, Marcus, on our kitchen counter at the time was an Alexa Echo Show 8, which is uh, now they have a 10, but at the time it was an 8. And it's sort of like having an iPad on your kitchen counter as far as the screen size, which is really, really cool. And I looked at that. And I thought, you know, it would have been really helpful if I could have, you know, had a video pop up on that um, Alexa and actually walk me through visually, since we're mostly visual learners, how to save my son. Um, and uh, so I, uh, I actually connected with an Amazon developer and we, we, we created it. Um, so you can, and my video will really pop up in about two seconds and it'll walk you through the rescue sequence step by step. Incredible. I want to come back to that in one sec, but, you know, back to the the drowning you know, what's very scary about the water and drowning and the, 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 I had a firsthand experience with this, which is when uh, kids go in the water, it's silent. It's not noisy. There's no flaring right. arms, smashing water, banging around. Like you hear kids in a pool jumping and playing around, right? And you hear the splashing and the shrieking and the playing. And that is opposite to what drowning and uh, drowning is. Drowning is very scary quiet and very silent. And as you described, very quick. Uh, a few years ago, we had uh, my wife's uh, cousins came over, a couple young kids. I think the kid, the the oldest one was probably about seven at this point. So older kid, right? And we had w- one of these swim spa- spas pool. And um, it's got a bunch of steps over here. And I looked at dad, I was like, you know, does, does he need water wings or a floaty or uh, a vest or anything? He's like, no, it looks pretty shallow. And I think he'll be able to stand. It should be cool. Okay, cool. Didn't think twice of it. I'm like, so he's good in the water? Yes, he's good in the water. Turned around and sat down and chatting away, chatting away. And I don't know what happened, but I just kind of moved. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this body floating in the water. And when I say floating, not like floating across like like a movie, the kid was standing, right? So his feet were on the ground, his head was underwater, and his arms were out. Anyway, I, I backflipped into the pool, pulled this kid up. Um, and if I didn't, he would have drowned and it, it didn't take long. It was maybe a minute and a half of him going in the water, turning around social conversation. How's it going? What's up? How are you? And then boom, right. And, and I'm a pretty aggressive personality. So I kind of reacted afterwards, which was like, you know, what is wrong with you? You should put things, uh, water wings on your kid. I caught myself. I'm like, oh gosh, man. Like, can you imagine how scary it was for them as parents? And, you know, I remember when I was a kid, my mother used to do um, physiotherapy with this, uh, with this one kid that fell in the pool and drowned, survived, didn't die, but ended up with brain damage yes. um, and was basically a vegetable. And it was a, it's a, it's a very sad, sad thing to, to, to experience. So let's come back to, which I think is brilliant, your Alexa and your Amazon uh, relationship. So, I've got this, uh, call it the Alexa on my, my, um, um, kitchen counter. Talk to us. How, how does this work? So God forbid something happens. I shout out, Hey, Alexa, play video or do, is there a command or a button that I push? There is a command. So what you would basically say is you would say, Alexa, open safe kids, CPR. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, once you say that, what will happen is, uh, the, then this is very important, how you save a baby from choking and how you save a child from choking, how you perform CPR on a baby under the age of one, how you mm-hmm. perform CPR on a child over the age of one. These are two entirely different skill sets. So what the Alexa actually asks you first is, if you're, is your child over the age of one? And if you, depending on how you answer that question, it's going to go into that specific rescue sequence. Um, and so what's also important that a lot of people don't realize, they also say, you know, well, I can just watch a video on how to save a baby from choking, for instance, on YouTube. Great. What if it doesn't work? Then you mm-hmm. better know age-specific CPR too. And that's something that people don't think about. Um, and so we created the, the way the skill works is actually walks you through the choking sequence. And then if that doesn't work and you have about two minutes before your child's going to become unconscious um, from lack of oxygen, then it goes into the CPR sequence and walks you through that sequence as well. Uh, because the average response time of 911 is over 10 minutes. Right, right. I mean, think I'm about that. Lucky. Your child's going to be You're unconscious lucky. within two minutes. So it's, it's on parents. Sometimes, I shouldn't say sometimes, you should be the first responder. You mm-hmm. should be 911 for your child. Still call 911. I'm not saying that. I'm saying absolutely call 911. Have them on the way. But the reality is, is that 911 is also auditory. So that's not visual. So most of us, now we're in a panic state. You know, and now we're listening to commands that we don't even understand because we don't have those fundamentals. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's just a recipe for disaster. And I just want to, you, you hit on such an important point, Greg, that I don't want to let it slide, is that um, drowning is a silent event and so is choking. If I mm-hmm. wasn't sitting across from Marcus when this happened and I was the typical distracted parent, like we all are in a lot of cases, um, I would have been you know, multitasking, doing other things until it's too late. Mm -hmm. You know, and so um, sit across from your children. And also this brings up another point is we'll never know who's going to be around an emergency. It could be your babysitter. Right. So if if you're going to have a babysitter, um, it's not enough for you and your wife or your spouse to or partner to, um, you know, know these skills. You have to make sure that whoever's taking care of of your children also have these skills. And so I'll just end with this as far as the Alexa is concerned. You know, what we tell parents is just like, listen, invite them over 15 minutes early. Have them watch the the skill on Alexa. Um, if not, you can access our masterclass on any device, um, and, and to just have that have that baseline, so you can leave home on date night with that sense of you know, um, it's sort of a peace of mind, knowing mm-hmm. that your babysitter is also is also prepared for an emergency. Yeah. You know, you said something which is choking is silent, and I didn't think of it that way. I was thinking, you know. Um, no one ever thinks it's going to happen to them. And, you know, when you when you have your first kid, your baby, you go and you do the baby class and they do baby CPR and baby, ba- uh, 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 if the baby's choking, which you pat them on the back. But one of the things that is also expressed is you don't really need to worry because babies have a really strong gag reflex. So it'll be okay if they, the most of the time they'll end up coughing it up and stuff. But it's it's a, it's a false sense of security when you're told that, right? So let's just walk through what is the difference between dealing with a baby that's choking and call it your toddler that's choking. And then also the CPR, what are some of the differences? Sir, for, so for, it's totally a position thing too. So for, for a baby that's choking, you're going to be holding them obviously with your, your arms, with your hands um, at a, about a 45 degree angle when you're doing those back slaps. Yeah. Um, so, so kind of like this, you're going to use gravity to get that object down, right? And then you're going to be doing a series of five back slaps in between their shoulder blades first, mm-hmm. right? And then that's going to be followed by turning them over. It's hard on Zoom to, I have a whole right, video right, on how right, to right. do this, obviously, but, uh, but then you're going to be turning over and you're, you're going to be doing a series of chest thrusts, uh, five of those. So it's a five to five ratio, um, about a, one and a half inches down. Um, and that's that's how that's the also the other difference between children and um, and babies is with children you're going about two inches down, mm. right? So and the and the positioning is completely different. So for instance, we had this one uh, video that went viral for our our program just for fathers, and um, you know the response to it it was a child choking is always Heimlich, Heimlich, Heimlich. All these people are just basically playing the expert on TV, right? Um, no, it's more complicated than that now. So, so we progress beyond just the Heimlich. So mm-hmm. even for children over the age of one, it's five back blows. We say back slaps for the babies, back blows, because obviously it's more forceful. Right. Also in between their shoulder blades, but then you're putting their head about parallel to the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, so their, their head is, is, again, using gravity. Um, and then, of course, when you stand them up after those five back blows, then you're doing the five abdominal thrusts 
You can say Heimlich inward and upward five times. So the ratios are the same five to five, but the techniques are completely different. Um, and then CPR, same thing. Your 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 the depth of your compressions are different. And then you know you brought up you brought up um, uh, choking, obviously, and also drowning. A lot of people don't know this too. Is is how you save someone from choking in a CPR. The same thing with baby children, but also scenario, the emergency. Um, mm-hmm. how you, the rescue sequence for choking is different than drowning. So if you pull that child out of the out of the water and they mm-hmm. weren't breathing, you know, you don't just start compressions like you would in a standard CPR. You would actually give rescue breaths first. Mm-hmm. So there are these nuances that we teach also just to say, listen, not everything is the same. There's so many different nuances. And like we only panic when we don't have the skills to solve the problem, right? And a skill is something that we need. And a skill is the ability to do something well. And when you're talking about life-saving skills, it's the ability to do something well in an emergency. So that's why you really need to refresh this knowledge. It's not enough. Yeah. Knowledge ha- it has to become a skill. Yeah. Well, that's why, I mean, even as adults, you got to recertify in your CPR. You need to recertify, I mean, you know, um, police, uh, 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 fire, uh, EMTs. I mean, it's not like they went through the training and certification once and then they've gone off in their career. It's an annual exercise. You know, I always mm-hmm. relate this stuff to the plane. You get on the plane and they show your safety video and everyone tunes it out. Like, ah, do we really yeah. need to watch us? Like, is, you know, blah, 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 blah. But, the truth to it is if you don't tell people every single time and remind them and you know i mean this is the way we 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 teach and facilitate in programs right it's called the three tells tell them what you're going to tell them tell them and then tell them that you told them and get repeat <laughs> repeat, repeat and the more we do that the more we can actually start to 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 um uh, develop that skill but you know like anything you could do the skill once or de- do the course once if you've never used the skill, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So, um, and most parents, as you said, aren't going to go and recertify every year, but to have this resource and this app and this tool on their iPhones, on computers, on their Alexas, on 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 just an easy click. Here's my scenario. What do I do? I think is brilliant. Unbelievable. Thank you. So w- what's your goal with this? Where do you want to take this? Is this, we want to, we want to go and teach the world? Yes, it's a worldwide problem. So statistically, it's uh, worldwide. It's 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 nearly a million children uh, worldwide, and that's a very big number. Obviously, we have sort of a cognitive blind spot to even fathom what that actually means as far as pain and suffering. But it's nearly a million children worldwide uh, will pass away uh, from unintentional injuries. Here in the U.S., it's about eight thousand. But when you really do the math on that, that's about one every hour, Jeez. right? So. I mean, and, and, and that's just death. So when we talk about, you, you mentioned this earlier about brain damage. So we, you can talk about death, but then we don't talk about the over 5.6 million to 7 million range of children taken to the ER, sometimes, as you said, with life-altering Im- uh, injuries, right? So these are things that really shift and change your life. We have our, our um, the expert that we have in our uh, masterclass on swimming specifically, um, she nearly drowned when she was a teenager twice and then spent the rest of her life uh, for the next, she's in her seventies. Uh, she recently passed away in her seventies, uh, mm-hmm. but she spent that whole entire time teaching safety for 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 swim safety. I mean, that that's how much this affected her. So, as far so, what I want to do, um, as far as my mission is concerned, is to radically reduce the number of childhood deaths and injuries. Um, and we have to do that through, I think, three key things, which is awareness, education, but also skills. So mm-hmm. we have a lot of awareness campaigns. We like to talk about all the problems, stuff like that, that gets the attention, but we don't actually educate ourselves and then actually create a skill. Um, and so I think those are the three things until those three things are really um, undertaken, um, sort of a collective sense of responsibility um, as, a, as, uh, as humans, you know, uh, to each other, um, you know, sort of like we talk about our brother's keeper, you know, it's like, um, we got to think about our community's keeper. It's like, uh, how are we taking care of each other? Um, so this is not only a skill that you, you would want to have just for your own family, but if you're in public sometime and another child was choking, I mean, how good would that feel to actually know what to do and a call and remain calm? Right. Right. And again, as you said that, uh, it's the remaining calm because when you're panicked and you're 
freaking out and you're 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 all over the place you're not making the decisions and to have that calmness and that instruction around you is great i also love the fact that as you were describing it there's a visual video because as you're describing it when someone's explaining to you things from an auditory standpoint you just might not process it the same way but to watch it and then to replicate it is far easier i mean we know this from from how much people retain from what they see versus what they hear they retain more from what they see, right? So right. very cool. Right. Very, very, very cool. Is there plans to expand this into um, other different types of safety courses, like, for example, for adults, or we're really focused on the kids? Yeah, not only for adults, but we're also, this is actually happening on Thursday in just a, a couple of days, is I'm actually um, teaching um, a blind father. Um, these who sees that they're actually expecting a baby. Um, so we're going to, um, you know, have a, a shift over into, um, people with disabilities, um, even blindness, even deaf parents, mm-hmm. there's a significant amount of them. And so you obviously, our training is very, very detailed, very specific. And as an investigator, I had to be detailed and specific. So uh, mm-hmm. we really try to make the videos um, understandable uh, to the degree to which we can um, to even those who are blind. Um, and so, and I think as far as expanding that too, when we talk about, we're working on this project uh, with someone, the statistics for African-Americans um, is far worse. Um, so um, the African-American community, as far as like sudden infant death syndrome, as an example, they're nearly three times more likely uh, to die from sudden infant death, death syndrome. They have a nearly six times more likely to drown and their choking rates are higher wow. when compared to Caucasian infants. And so we're doing a program just for them as well and really identifying what are the areas that are causing these and we're trying to fix those as well. So yes, we are expanding um, as far as adults are concerned. Um, that's down the line a little bit, people with disabilities as well. Um, so um, yes, absolutely. Cool. Uh, and I, as you're saying that, I'm just thinking, I mean, is there an idea of what the what the reasons are, which the stats are so much higher within that community versus other communities? Or it's just, yes, it's just and, and, general uh, stats? Yeah. So anytime you have a socioeconomic divide, you're going to have access to the information that um, somebody in, let's say, Beverly Hills mm-hmm. is going to be different than the south side of Chicago. Right. All right. So you have access to the to correct information. There's a digital divide as well. Um, mm-hmm. So you don't necessarily have access to that same information the way other people do. Um, and then there's some cultural differences. So there are a lot of times where the grandparents will, let's say, be taking care of them at a higher rate of the children. Mm-hmm. And they have, um, that. that's been shown that they don't believe that SIDS, for instance, can be prevented, that it's sort of a random event, um, which is not the case. You can, while we can never say we can 100% prevent SIDS, there are a number of different things that we can do uh, to reduce that risk. And so we go through that in my book, for instance, like really detailed how to create that safe sleep environment. Also, um, like bed sharing is is a is an issue with that community, that that mm-hmm. sort of that information has not gotten out. Um, mm-hmm. So when we think about safe sleep, for instance, we want to think about the ABCs of safe sleep. You know, you want them alone, all right, not co-sharing. We don't mm-hmm. want, we want them alone in a crib. We want them on their backs, which is going to be the B, right? And nothing in the crib. We don't want any, you know, cushions and, you know, um, mm-hmm. blankets and all of this stuff in there uh, that could cause a suffocation or a strangulation. And then C is for, stands for crib. So crib, you know, something that's um, not been recalled, obviously, um, or a bassinet as well. Um, and sharing the room with that child, uh, there are different uh, reasons for uh, why they should be breastfeeding and then how even pacifiers can reduce the risk. So mm. getting that information out and bridging that digital divide is going to be super important for uh, for that community. And of course, the training. How do you save a child from choking when the rates are higher? How do you prevent drowning? What are some safe uh, swimming skills uh, that we can give to them while encouraging them to actually physically go get uh, classes, which we, of course, always do? This should be mandatory training for parents. Like you're you're going to have a baby. All right. Well, you know, come in, do your. And there is there's the the general one, the hospital, the community offers, which is usually filled with a bunch of people. I remember doing it. Right. Uh, did the breastfeeding class and did the baby CPR class. If you ask me what I remembered from the class, it was hit them on the back, not five times, yeah. not in the center. Right. Um, you know, just, just hit them on the back, not the angle. Um, so remember the, you don't give them the hymic as a baby, right? Yeah. You, you, you right. pat them on the back, but this is way more specific and detailed and descriptive. And this is what this type of training and, and education and skill set needs to be very precise 
um, and taken very seriously. And it, it, it should be mandatory for parents. You know, if you think about, you need a driver's license to drive a car, you need, you need to turn a certain age to, to vote and to, to buy alcohol. Um, same thing. You want to have a kid? Great. You need to be certified in baby CPR and, and, and kid CPR and, and, and choking, and then keep that certification going. Right. It'll be very cool for a lot of companies that offer things like daycare and, and those types of facilities to also bring this type of program into that uh, into that uh, company organi- organization. Yeah, we're, we're working on that uh, very, very hard. I know you are. Excellent man. idea. <laughs> uh, listen, any, anything I can help you with from like, you know, just getting this out there and selling it and and, and presenting it and, you know, what companies we could refer in and stuff like that. I, I'll have this conversation with you offline anytime, man. Happy, happy to, Fantastic. To, to get behind this. I think it's an important cause. And again, you know, I, I we've had moments with our kids and, and, and you said something so, so um, uh, impactful earlier. You said, I fed my kid standing in the kitchen and if i was distracted turned around washing dishes you know getting another meal ready for a kid and i didn't look up and see my two-year-old choking and the way you saw them choking wasn't because it looked like they're choking it looked like they froze and then Mm -hmm. having to take that action so quickly this is this is the difference right the difference between life saving and 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 not it's those it's those those few seconds that we have to act and 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 again it's not just the action it's then what do we do so cool man super cool all right um if the audience wanted to find out more about this if they wanted to download some of the uh if they want to sign up for some of the courses if they wanted to uh, get involved with you and help sort of spread the word and 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 the, and the uh the training out there how can they find out more information about this Sure. So uh, two, two specific sites. So safekidscpr.com um, is the company website. And you can also, we actually just added it uh, uh, about a couple of weeks ago when we launched uh, the Alexa skill, you can actually download for free. So, um, and again, that's, that's baby and child choking plus CPR rescue sequences. Um, as far as my book, Emergency, this book will save your baby's life. Um, that's at emergencythebook.com. Um, and the title emergency, this book will save your baby's life, but we actually expanded it in the second edition. So we follow, we basically grow with your family. So it's not just for babies. It's also for children over the age of one, including up until they're in their teens. Uh, so that we really expanded everything to make sure that we cover uh, the whole child's life. Um, and so those are the two primary websites. There's a, there's a cool book called the, my ex-partner gave this to me. It was written by three PhDs. It's called the baby book. That basically tells you everything you need to know, except CPR and choking, on what you need to do with that baby, right? Which is how to breastfeed, how to sleep, how to just it's it's like a tech manual for for the first two years of of the kid's life. And as you were talking about that, I was thinking, you know what? This would be a good sort of pairing, right? It's a it's a popular book that most people reach out for and get. And I think it should be paired with this book. In fact, to all the audience out there, if you're buying books on how to be a parent, on how to 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 raise your kids, on how to feed them, on how to sleep with them, on how to, you know, sleep train them, on how to do all this stuff, which we all look for as parents, right? Specifically in the first couple of years, one of those books needs to be this book, right? You said it's called Emergency. Emergency, this book will save your baby's life. Yep. Emergency, this book will save your baby's life. Everyone needs to go and Google that and get on Amazon right now and download that book and order it. And in fact, if you got friends that are having babies, you know how you get them stupid gifts, you get them like a pacifier, <laughs> still do that. You know, I think when babies wipes and pacifiers and, 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 and cloths and like a jumper, that's really nice. But this book or maybe even this app and this program uh, would be a way better gift. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, if we're ever trying to figure out what do we get uh, get someone when it comes down to kids, what a great gift to get them, which is here's how to save your kid's life or your baby's life if anything is ever to go wrong. And God forbid, you'll never need it, right? but boy, will you be thankful to that person when they show up in your life again and say, you know, it was because of your book that my kid's still alive right now. Mark, incredible Thank work. You so and, and Thank it, you so you, much. You were an investigator with the police before, right? Uh, no, personal injury investigators. We would uh, ah, basically yeah. handle cases in civil, supreme, and federal court on behalf of uh, insurance carriers. Ah, you remind me of my buddy. You guys are brilliant. Your attention to detail and your ability to see things is super, super, super precise. He used to do the same thing. 
All right. Um, let's drop some. Uh, so we dropped some of the links uh, for the audience. We're also going to put that all in the show notes. So if you miss the links, uh, they'll definitely be in the show notes. Um, and just drop the website one more time. Sure. Safekidscpr.com. And emergencythebook.com. Yeah. Perfect. So we're going to have those uh, lists out there. So normally at the end of the episode, we come to the better human question, which is what do you think we could all do to be better humans tomorrow? But I'm going to change that to the better parent question. What do you think we could do to be better parents tomorrow? I think I, I think I tackle kind of both in the same the same uh, piece of advice is to, I think we could all be better humans if we have a, a more of a sense of a collective sense of responsibility to one another, both our kids and to one another. Um, you know, you mentioned real quick about, um, uh, you know, really thinking about, uh, for instance, like Germany, um, the C- in order to get a driver's license in Germany, you actually need to be certified in CPR. And what they found is, is that because everybody knows it, it's mandatory, their survival rates are far higher hmm. than other countries. All right. And so now they're doing it in mo- many, um, you know, primary schools as well, like elementary schools, teaching this stuff and refreshing these skills. So you're, what we're doing in other countries, instead of this country, is in mm-hmm. other countries, they're, they're really building that collective sense of responsibility to one another. So if you see somebody on the side of the highway that's in cardiac arrest or in a car accident, oh. they know what to do. They've been trained on it. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I would really encourage people to think about that. And um, I'll just end with something that you said earlier, Greg, which is so important is, I never thought it would happen to me. Mm-hmm. Famous last words, right? So let's prevent these things from happening because that's, we, we don't want to be saying that someday. You know, um, I never thought it would happen to me or never thought I'd be in this situation and didn't know what to do. Uh, mm-hmm. So make that vow to your family, make that vow to yourself that you're going to learn these life-saving skills, uh, be situationally aware, um, and uh, think about, you know, how you can have a collective sense of responsibility to one another. Yeah, that's a community, right? Being a steward in the community and, 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 and looking after the community. Love it, Mark. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right. For the audience, uh, for the parents, for the audience members that have uh, friends that are becoming parents, you've got the links. Uh, definitely something to go and uh, pick up. Uh, if you're looking to uh, speak to Mark, you can reach him out. Uh, reach out to him on uh, LinkedIn. That's where you and I are connected, right? Yeah, yes, I so. believe so. And also Instagram, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all there. And just uh, how do we find you on LinkedIn and TikTok and Instagram? What, what are some of the handles that people should search? Well, LinkedIn, it'll just be my name as far as TikTok. It'll be at SafeKidCPR um, and, uh, you know, uh, Instagram.com forward slash um, SafeKidCPR as far as Instagram is concerned. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, SafeKidCPR, we have links to those really easy to um, cool. to get in the uh, footers. Cool. Yeah, that's easy to uh, SafeKidCPR. I mean, that's that's an easy yep. handle to remember. All right. Really appreciate you, Mark. Uh, you know, I look forward appreciate to you too. Uh, keeping in touch and, uh, you know, being part of your world and uh, helping you get this out there. It's amazing. Thank you, Greg, so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome to the audience. If you like today's episode, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share, go and follow Safe Kids CPR, and uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.